Krishnastu Bhagavan Swayam, Krishnastu Bhagavan Swayam, Srila Prabhupada Jai. So, Bhagavatam should always be here for the morning. Bhagavatam is our guiding in life. Could you also tell something about Nitya and Nityananda in us and how it works? Nitya Nanda? I don't know. I have no idea. You have no idea? Yes. Nitya, Nitya Nanda, what's the difference? It's the same. Nitya Yoga, I have. There's some speculation out there that you should only chant the Thai and not God. We don't agree with that. Because our Guru Deva has given us Nitai Gaur. We worship Nitai Gaur, we chant Nitai Gaur. So, but in ontology, Guru comes first. We cannot approach Krishna without Guru. And Guru is Nityananda. Guru is expanded Nityananda. Guru is expanded Radharani. But who can, who, who, who can understand that? We can hardly understand when he tells us, read the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> Sometimes also I hear that Nityananda is like the Guru in us. Huh? It's like the Guru in us. That's a Chaitya Guru. That's Paramatma. That's a Chaitya Guru. But, but the Guru principle is there. So Paramatma is also Nityananda principle. You can say so. Everything which is Guru principle is Haribol Mata. Everything which is Guru principle that is uh, connected to the same source or the same electric current. You may have this current, uh, plug and another plug and an extension, but it's always the current which you are connecting to. So the divine current of caring that God cares for us, that you could call Nityananda. You can also call it rather run. Some, some, some say Ananda Manjari. But this is this is very elevated information for for the, my Guru Deva Shila Bhakti Rakakshira. Whenever some subject came up which are beyond our mind, he would take his hand over his hand like this. He says, "This is above my head. It doesn't go inside." I, I worship it. I keep my feet my head under the feet of this divine teachings. Too much intellectualizing sometimes may become a disturbance. Like this one person said, we shouldn't chant Gaur, we should just chant Nita. I think he got mentally disturbed because even though he has some good arguments to say, but they're not valid because Prabhupada, the guru of the world, he gave us Gaur Nithai, he chanted Gaur Nithai, Nitai Guranga, Nitai Guranga, so why make changes there? Now if I, like I may say, oh, Prabhupada is the greatest, Prabhupada is the great messenger, he's the savior of the world, so stop chanting Hare Krishna, let's chant Prabhupada, 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 Prabhupada. Will that please Prabhupada? The principle is not wrong. He says, no, I will just chant the Guru's name. And then somebody else would say, no, no, not chant Prabhupada, send some Maharaj, some Maharaj, some Maharaj. Uh, and another guy would say, no, 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 we should chant Paramadveti, Paramadveti. Oh my God. And I, I'll, go, I'll go under the earth. <laughs> uh, so we shouldn't speculate. We should take things as we get them from Guru Deva. <laughs> and now Srila Prabhupada is a high level, high power security of the correct. You can, you can say so. Totally empowered is Shakti Avesha Avatar, recognized on all levels. So it's a safe way to go his way. So the person who speculates about Nityananda, I like him personally, he's a very likable person, but sorry, that's not from Prabhupada. You can't say that. So sometimes people also do make themselves more important than others, 
then they stress something the others don't stress. And what that leads to, to some fanaticism and sectarianism and my group is better than your group because we know something you don't know, we know something you don't know, we do something you don't do, we do something you don't know. So, we are better in your work, we are lower. It's not much. It's separation. Huh? It's separation. Separation, it's infatuation, it is uh, self-aggrandizement, but hidden in philosophy. Hidden in philosophy, so that is, sometimes these things are noticeable in the world, but what can we do? If we see the sectarianism which sometimes shows up in, amongst Vaishnavas, we can't blame the Christians anymore for being so sectarian. <laughs> well, we have a dose of it by ourselves. But is it correct? Is it that the attitude? Srila Prabhupada said, I did not come to change your religion. He said, I came to help you to become better people, more realized about the divine. And you apply that to you. And so, there's some devotees, they even have a Jesus Christ statue in their temple, some on the altar. So then others say, oh, this is not my trouble. <laughs> uh, okay, but it is a question of what your heart feels. If you feel that Jesus is also Guru Tattva and you want to remember that, what's the wrong with that? So, the, the fanaticism, the orthodoxy, don't think just imitate or do what you're told. I mean, it has a validity on its positive angle, but it has not much validity when it becomes separating from others and creating bad feelings and that. It doesn't do. No, I, I don't have a statue of Jesus on my altar. Maybe I should because I preach in Christian countries, but when I see Jesus, I have the problem. I s start thinking about the Christians and all my desire for spirituality disappears almost. I can't focus on Jesus independent from these Christians and what they did in the world. So I'm not eager. But like Sadhu Maharaj, he was, he, he was taught in a Catholic, in some Catholic school, he has a very beautiful feelings for Jesus, very highly respectful, it doesn't tarnish his Vaishnava feelings, uh, and maybe he don't know all the details what the Christians did in the world. Maybe he has not heard about it because nobody told him, you know, so he's not contaminated in this regard, because it's a contamination to hear, when you hear, hear for example, uh, one of my brothers, he wrote a book uh, about the, uh, what do you call it, in, in, Inquisition. Uh, and he called it, call it a spiritual terrorism. He called it. It's a very heavy book. When you read that book, you start shaking in your knees. No, thank you. Never again. Keep these people away from you. <laughs> so, so, I come a world where you know all these things and you feel all these things and so on. So, in this way, but spiritual life is very open, you know. You should respect the feelings of others. That's the secret. Because if they... If they have their faith built up in this way, like some people is a, really a Guru Nanak fan. You know, Guru Nanak, a famous medieval time guru. No, people love him. So why disturb their faith? What's the use? Guru Nanak is supposed to have met even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and and so many others. So so this is the. Uh, it's a lovely part, actually. You see the Lord, He is worshipped by many people in many different forms. But then you come to the confidential philosophy, and the confidential philosophy does get exclusive. Because only if you know it, you're included in that exclusive realm. 
but that exclusivity has to be introduced in the forefront, in the first and final, love all, support all. If your exclusivity is love all, but love some more and ignore the others, then it doesn't make any sense anymore. Then, then, it, then, then it's actually self-defeating. It self-defeats. But one question, but in this case from Jesus that you took um, What's that? No, in, the, in this case that you took Jesus as an example and all the teachings and learnings from him that they, are, they seem to be very gen, uh, genuine, very genuine, genuine um, and they were understood or they were teach, taught by others very wrong in this case what happened? Like, how we have to be? How we have to take the teachings from him? We don't have to. No, no. I mean, if we, because for example, my, myself, I was raised Catholic too, but and I respect him, and I recognize him in a very high spiritual teacher. But then when I see the facts as you as you are doing, it's very bad. What what has happened in his name? But he's actually a very inspiring teacher. Yeah, well, the truth is the truth. The beauty is the beauty. And the guru represents beauty and truth. So, what is the problem here? Truth and beauty is truth and beauty. Give it with Krishna, give it with Jesus, give it with whatever you give. It's truth and beauty which we are worshipping. <laughs> and that is... Uh, it's a universal principle and uh, I mean, if you ask the Jews, they will tell you that Jesus was an invention. They say this whole figure of Jesus, if you go in the studies of that, I read those books, they say he was actually a copy of some, there was a famous preacher there was, uh, who, who was having a similar name and they made it up and they made it up according to the Krishna law. Hey, how is that? Born in a cow shed, persecuted by King Herodes, all the children killed in the area. Does it sound familiar? Yes. So now what happened? The Christians came to India and they claimed that the Hindus had copied it from the Christian. So they said that Krishna was an invention. So they preached that here in India until the discovery of the Heliodorus Column. Heliodorus Column was discovered in Madhya Pradesh. You look like you haven't heard about it. No, <laughs> we have to read those books, you know, it's published in our books. Uh, Heliodorus Column was, was a, a, a pillar which was archaeologically identified to be something like 300 pre before Christ. And in this column, this is uh, signed by, by a king from Greece who had to uh, an ambassador in Madhya Pradesh, at that time Madhya Pradesh was like an important place, and this Greek, Greek empire was expanding very much and they had an ambassador there. And this ambassador, he put this column in honor of Vasudeva. And then he, he explains about Krishna and Balaram on the column. I don't remember the exact text, but it is a very clear, this king, or this ambassador, he became a devotee of Lord Krishna before Christ even was dated. So when that column appeared, the Christians, now they don't say that. In those days, they were preaching that, that the Indians copied from Jesus the story, and this Krishna was an invention. But then some Jewish people turned around, and they said, no, it's the other way around. 
the Christians copied it from India and that Jesus is an invention. Now, what the heck? I mean, what? Do I really care about it? Not, I don't care about it because the Christian church started with vegetarianism. The, the, Jesus, the Jesus figure was chosen by history or by whatever it is. Jesus figure was chosen to be a Essene. And the Essene was a Jewish group which believed in reincarnation, in karma, and in vegetarianism. So, whoever believes in karma, individual responsibility in vegetarianism, for us, he's a devotee. He's a transcendentalist. He's missing nothing. And that's why we are so close to some of the native cults in South America, <coughs> because they believe in reincarnation, they believe in karma. Uh, some believe in vegetarianism, not all of them, because there are many of them from hunters' background, from the jungles. So, anyhow, so the Essene, they were known in the history, I mean, this is documented by secular scholars. So now Jesus was supposed to be in the scene. So was he going against his group, against and preaching the opposite? No, I don't think so. And then neither does the scripture say so. Only the multi, multiple changes of the Bibles have like hodgepodged it up so that some confusion exists. But practically speaking, Bible teaching is thou shall not kill and those, though, those who kill an ox are just like killing a man, Old Testament. So that is obviously an instruction against cow killing, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> so if we have that right there. And then, very interestingly, appeared the sermons, or what you call the apocryphic books, which are the... Sermon of Jesus of the Twelve, the Sermon of Jesus of... There's a few apocryph books, I forget the names. Actually, Wangsi translated one of them for me to Spanish, and I lost in the file, uh, but Wangsi did that. So this apocryph, when you read them, you are hearing a Krishna Bhakta, he's talking about the divine, the dedication, caring of animals. He he's a... He's a that person in the apocryph, he's, he's a great saint who's preaching to the Jewish people of the, those days and the Romans and whoever was there. There are a lot of people, they believe that uh, Jesus lived in uh, India. That's uh, another one, the, 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 the history of Jesus in Kashmir. Exactly. That is also there. But anyhow, in Ladakh actually, in Ladakh, it's somewhere it's supposed to be his grave. Anyhow, I'll be back in a moment. Mohana, <laughs> <laughs> uh, give some further introduction. I'm coming back. <laughs> Uh, all this session will be successful. 
And for chant better, we can follow five steps. The first is listening. Uh, the second is to take a reflection uh, about what I am listening. Not just listening with everything and uh, accept everything. The third is to uh, accept uh, Guru and his instruction, his service. The fourth is feeling established in one service and the final is shared with another. The things that you are doing. This is the things that I can share with you. And now, Guru I was just thinking something on the way, and that is, do I have to know all religions to practice my own? The answer is clear. No, because there's no way you're going to know all the religions. Does it mean that God doesn't care for you? No. Does it mean that God doesn't care for others? No. So we have a clear common sense evaluation. So I do not have to know all the religion to practice mine. I have no time for that. But I should respect all religion to practice mine. If I don't respect all religion to practice mine, then my own practice will be tarnished. It will not be so pure because I become discriminated. Now I may say I don't respect those who hurt others, who give trouble to others. That is a reasonable, uh, a reasonable proposal or a concept. We should not respect those who are going ahead and simply giving trouble to others. So. Uh, our, our conclusion is that we should practice our religion very seriously, but we should also keep an open mind for those who are surrounding us. Because maybe I don't care so much for the religions the Australian Aborigines practice, because I've never been to Australia, I never met one single one of them, so I don't really care so much. But if I'm living in Australia and there's Australian Aborigines or uh, uh, original people there, no, I better respect what they do because they are now my neighbors. And, and if I know a little bit more about them, what they are thinking, how, what is their cosmology, their concept of the divine, well, that's, I can respect that. And if you do so, then... Uh, you may discover that God is looking after everybody according to their evolution by revealing certain things to them. And that's what it's all about. Now, sharing your good feelings about your religion with those who like to find out about it, that's not wrong. That is also, that is as good as education itself, is as good as conversation itself. That's why we have an ear, that's why we have a mouse, so that we can use it and share with others what good things we have discovered. And if I would not apply this, if I would not use this, I would never, never have found out about Prabhupada, I would never have found out about Hinduism, I would never have found out about what to do with my life, because I was pretty lost. So, that is the clue, respect. Regard, kindness, don't hurt others. Go ahead, back to home, back to God. And that's what Prabhupada called his magazine, back to home, back to God. Let's all go home. Let's all go to the spiritual sky. This is our only uh, definitely sweet destination. And we hope to meet all of us. Can you imagine you go to the spiritual world and you're there and you meet with 10,000 people and you ask the Lord, Hey, my Lord, I was there in a place there were billions. What happened to them? Where were you? I was in planet Earth. And there were billions? Yeah, there were billions. Billions of human beings plus 
trillions of other species, where are they now? I would like to know. <laughs> I'm sure the Lord has a good answer for that. <laughs> because he knows everything. <laughs> but it would not feel nice to be liberated with 10,000 people and the rest is gone. That's not nice. It's not a nice idea. So that's why the Harinam Sankta movement is, care, is concerned with everybody, with the animal souls as well. Shivananda Sena was accompanied by a dog when he went to Jagannath Puri. And when they were going to cross the river, the dog also jumped on. And then somebody said, hey, the dog, the dog, you have to pay for the dog also. Hmm? And then Shivananda Sena paid the boatsman to take the dog over because he didn't want to reject this dog which had come along with them on that parikrama. So that dog went to Puri all the way to the end. And, and when, when that, uh, finally they got to meet Lord Chaitanya. Oh, when they went to Puri, the dog disappeared. So they didn't know, oh, where is the dog? Then they, went, they finally went to take darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then, I don't remember exactly, but... Uh, I think Mahaprabhu threw some grain, the dog also appeared again, and Mahaprabhu threw some prasadam at the dog, and the dog was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, uh. something like that. So the dog got the Vaishnava's mercy, and then got the Lord's mercy, and revealed, that's our philosophy. We don't see dog and cat. We see brothers and sisters in different bodies. And we should help all of them as much as we can. This is natural. <laughs> That's why people's hearts are so much hurt when they see condition of the cow in today's world. So many people have cow sheds and they do things. Yes. Panihati Fest. Also organized by Raghunath Goswami. I don't remember it very well. I have to read it again, but uh, in that festival, I think Nityananda came and gave special mercy to him. And he put his foot on Raghunath's head. And after that, everything went like perfectly uh, sweet, swift. So, and it's Panihati is between Calcutta and Mayapur. So when we go to Calcutta, we always drive by the Calcutta, lo the Panihati location. And some missions have a festival there yearly on the Panihati day. That, that day is rem remembered. Now, have you been there? No, no? Yeah. On March? Yeah, you have been to a Panihati festival or just to the place? No, Panihati festival. Yes? Yes. Organized by ISKCON? Mm. It's a big festival, a big road, and everybody is there. It's, really it's huge. It's huge. Yes. Many missions are there. Yes. <coughs> yeah, I don't know. I've never been to the festival, so... Huh? I'm going from Vrindavan, Wow, even from here. Yeah. Yes. Do you know anything more about the story? No, just what you said. Just what I said, but that's what I heard. Okay, now we're going to take a little prasadam and then we get ready for our today's divine cleaning service. We have bags? Yeah, you want me to promote it? Yes. Anybody wants to? Hare uh, Krishna, Hare Krishna. We have this nice T-shirts from Braj Vrindavanek now, so you can obtain one for you to remind yourself, and also to go out with one. So, there is the 
possibility to obtain those